Okay, so here we are with another physics tutorial. Now this one will show you kind of how to make a car, kinda. It'll be it'll be a little bit more complicated. I'll use code to create objects, or the uh, physics fixtures, and then yeah, I'll create a joint to connect the wheel to the car. All right, so I just loaded it up here, and if I click anywhere on the screen, it creates a car. Now not so impressive so far until I create another one. And you'll notice that they actually do have wheels that turn and they are connected to the vehicles and they aren't having any interaction with themselves or like with the other object anyway so yeah this is kind of fun it gets a little bit glitchy right now not sure why with the new updates the physics engine seems to work a little bit differently but anyway I can just keep creating cars for fun. There we go. So as you can see, it's pretty cool. And then you can add any type of force you want to the wheels if you want to be able to drive said car. Okay. So now I'll show you how to do this. So first things first, I created two different sprites. SPR car here. I just drew it out. And SPR wheel. So the only main thing you need to note about these is that I did center the sprites so that the XY coordinates of the sprite is directly in the center. This is very useful for physics. Next, in object control, um, global left press, I just create instance of object car. I could have done that with code, but I just wanted it to be simple. So in the creation event here, we have um, four different scripts. All of them are the same. SCR create line. What this will do is it's a little script I created to make a solid line from one point to another point. So that's a very useful feature. So here is the script, SCR create line. So what it does is it creates some temporary variables. It's a, it then sets those temporary variables, temp x and temp y, to the center of the four points that we gave. So right in between, because that's where we want to create our object. So then I do, I create the object, and I set a variable to the creation of that object so that I can then use that variable as if it were the object, because I may have many object lines, but I only want to use the one. So here we go, I set the, um, the variables inside of the object line to the different points that I gave in the script, because I have to do all that inside of the object. So then, object line, I, I I did um, check the box use physics, and then I set density to zero and I set box. But it has no sprite, so this will not be the physics that it uses. So right here on creation event of our object line, I created a fixed line variable. Now this what this will do is this will just create a fixture. It will not do anything yet until you bind it to an object. So and then I did physics fixture set box shape, but this won't do anything yet. Now, I also um, just set these variables so that it wouldn't give me an error when I attempted to set them later. And then I set alarm 0 to 1 because I wanted to make sure that when the next action happened that these variables were different from 0. So in alarm 0, we can physics fixture set box shape. First variable, fix line, this just points us towards the fixture that we already created. And then it creates the next variable is half width. So the next number should be half of the width of the object or the box that we wanted to create. So in my case, I do point distance between the two points that we set in the script, and then I cut it in half. So the box will be exactly the right width. And in height, I just stick that at 1. And that way, it'll be exactly 2 pixels tall, and pretty good for a line. So and then the next one, fix your set density. Obviously, uh, I set it to zero so that it'll be solid. Now, for the important part that'll actually make the fixture useful, I'll physics fixture bind. This will f bind the fixture to the object. So this is what actually activates it and binds it to your object. So I used self. You could use the ID of an object, but I just used self so that it'll bind it to myself. <laughs> And then physics fixture deletes. I delete the fixture so that it's no longer taking up RAM. Now I physics rotate. I set that variable to minus point direction. And then the point 
the direction between the two points so that it'll turn in a way that the line is actually facing the right direction and is a perfect line between the two points. There we go. And then in draw event, I merely draw a line between the two points so we can actually see it, but you wouldn't have to do that. Or you could just set visible to false. So now for the actually interesting part, object car. I I obviously set use physics, and then I used shape, and then modify collision shape. You can see that I just kind of did an outline of the car. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be, you know, kind of close. And then in creation event here, here is where we do the interesting bit. We create the wheels. So first it creates a wheel and sets a variable to that wheel so that we can edit the variables inside of the wheel. So with that wheel, it will create a joint. So physics joint revolute create. So what this will do is this will create a joint that will allow it to stay in the same position in ratio to the object, but it will allow for rotation. So the first variable is the instance of the object of the first one and that would be myself obviously and then the other instance will be other so in this case the car and then obviously the uh, anchor x and the anchor y which will be the x and y meaning that it'll be in the center of the object and then the lower angle limit and the upper, upper angle limit this is if you want to limit how far it can rotate but i didn't but it doesn't really matter because i disabled that limit and then max max motor torque, max motor speed, that kind of stuff. But I turned off the motor, so it doesn't matter. And then I did the exact same thing with another object, merely changing the position of the second object. So this will create the two wheels exactly where I want them, and then it'll create the joint that'll connect it to myself. Now, when you create a joint, um, this last, I think it's the last variable. If you set it to false, that means that they can't have a collision with each other so they can be inside of each other and it won't do anything even if you add the null inside of the collision event which I did because I wanted it to be able to collide with other objects well like other cars and then inside of the wheel I didn't really do anything I just did hit the use physics button made it a circle I think I made it a little bit smaller than the actual tire itself this makes for a nice look and then I just added the null inside of all the collision events and that is about it all I had to stick in the room was just the object control. And then it creates everything. There we go. So if I run the game once again, you can see the effect. There we have it. So I can create cars. And they like to bounce around and roll off of each other. Perfect. So I'll be giving this to you guys in editable form and in, whoa, that was weird, and in all um, exported modes. So I'll give it to you in Mac, I think I'll be able to do that, and HTML5 and in EXE, just that you guys can see what all types of modules GameMaker H or Studio is able to put out. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.